Welcome back everyone. This is David from visionrecordingstudios.com. How are you today? In today's video, we are going to do a little bit of a studio tour. I've been talking about a lot of the new gear uh, that I purchased from my studio. I've talked a little bit about the software, the hardware, guitar amps, guitar recording tools uh, to help me make better music for myself and for my clients. Um, and now I'm going to show it to you. Uh, nothing uh, high production, kind of down and dirty video, but it's going to be uh, something that will get the point across, trust me. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to show you some of the uh, isolation rooms as well as the gear so you get to see the drum room, the vocal isolation booth, the artist lounge, an area where I um, isolate guitar cabinets out in the back. So hopefully it'll help, hopefully it'll kind of give you an insight to how I do what I do here. Um, and um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, or send me an email to visionrecordingstudios at yahoo.com. Um, as of the making of this video, April 2014, we are coming close to 4,000 YouTube subscribers, so I thank you so much for your support. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for liking, for subscribing, and for sharing my videos. I'm glad it's helping most of you out there. I get wonderful emails, wonderful comments, um, and I'm glad I'm, it's helping. So I want to continue to try to help. Send me your feedback. Let me know what you think of this video and other videos on my YouTube channel. Um, and the more uh, constructive criticism I get from all of you and more feedback I get from all of you, the better videos and the better content I can make. So sit back, enjoy the video, enjoy the studio tour. I hope you enjoy it. Um, again, uh, this is April 2014. Uh, gear is always changing, but um, I think I've settled in on pretty much my setup for probably quite some time. So I hope you enjoy it. And until next time, signing off, uh, this is VisionRecordingStudios.com. Okay, welcome over to the uh, workstation, the council area. I um, just wanted to show you some of the gear and I'll show you some uh, some B-roll footage of zooming in on some of the equipment as I'm talking here. Um, so let me start off by um, the interfaces. So what I'm using here is I'm using two Sapphire, Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 8-channel interfaces. There's two of them here that are um, daisy chained together to give me 16 inputs. So I'm recording a full band, I could do a full drum kit, two guitars, keyboards, bass, vocals, all playing live at the same time and recording all simultaneously. So that's what I have here for my interfaces. Um, above that is um, what we is a Hosa uh, patch bay um, mic panel. And what this does is it allows me to not have to get underneath the console every time I want to patch in stuff into the, into the Focusrite units because um, only the first two inputs on the Focusrite units are, are um, in the front. The rest, channels three through eight, are in the back. So it got to be a pain crawling underneath and plugging in the, 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 the microphone uh, snake, the cables. So I got a, um, this, this beautiful little unit from Sweetwater for 99 bucks, and I have jumper cables that go from the back of this uh, mic panel into, or actually out of the Focusrite, or actually, no, excuse me, out of the uh, Hosa mic panel into the uh, Focusrite inputs. And then I've labeled them on the top here so I can uh, just plug straight into the top. So no more climbing under the console, which is great. Um, and then up here, I just have a monster um, power conditioner, um, the Pro 2500, um, where all my electronics plug into that. Uh, from here, uh, on, in this section, I have the um, PreSonus HP60, which is the six channel headphone amplifier, which works really nice. So I can have the six uh, pairs of headphones going at the same time in the studio. Um, which is wonderful. Um, beneath that I have the uh, summing devices that I've talked about in my other videos. I have the uh, Dangerous Music uh, Two Bus LT, which is the top unit here. And then I have the Dangerous Music D-Box. So the Two Bus LT is a 16 channel analog summing, which allows me to come out of my Focusrite units into the Two Bus LT, sums the audio, so the DAW isn't summoning the audio any longer, and then out of the 2-bus LT into the D-Box. And what's great about the D-Box, it's not only a summing device, has a real high quality AD converter. Um, it allows you to hook up a CD player, uh, their DAW, another analog source, and um, a third uh, uh, analog or digital source as well. So you can, if you want to hook up your iPod and compare, let's say, reference tracks off your iPod or your iPhone, um, against your mixes, you're listening to all the sources through the same AD converter, which is great. So you're really getting a good representation, accurate representation of your mix compared to your reference tracks. Uh, also has um, uh, an alternate uh, set of speakers. So you plug your, you have your main monitors 
that uh, go to the output. And then you can also hook up um, a second set of speakers to check your mixes. And again, over to my right here, you'll see um, a boom box where I check all my mixes on, my, on a boom box. So I check them in my main monitors, which are my full cals, which we'll talk about in a second. And then I reference that against um, the JVC $24 boom box. So if it sounds good on the boom box, it's gonna sound good anywhere outside in your car, on a set of earbuds, on a laptop, on a set of computer speakers. And then it also has a wonderful talkback section, which is uh, hooked up to the uh, HP60, the headphone amplifier. So now I could toggle on and off and talk to my musicians uh, throughout different parts of the studio, which is great. Uh, so that is the electronics uh, that I have here, my gear, my, uh, my, my outboard gear. Uh, here I have a radial uh, 500 series workhorse. Uh, this has, um, is really for my vocal chain, or if I'm recording individual instruments, um, I'll patch everything through this preamp, which is a Rupert Neve 511 preamp. Wonderful preamp, which has um, this uh, wonderful thing down here called the uh, silk control. And the silk control kind of uh, replicates or tries to emulate the old Neve consoles, and it gives you that nice, you can, you can dial in more or less silk. And the silk kind of creates that analog uh, harmonic distortion uh, that gives you that nice warmth in the old school Neve consoles, which is great. So you can turn that on, turn that off, get some different tonal possibilities. Um, and then from there, it goes into this uh, Brute uh, Inward Connections uh, Brute Opto Compressor, which I love, which you can probably see the needles moving on this now uh, as my voice is going into this. This is a wonderful um, uh, 500 series uh, analog chain that I use, again, primarily, if I'm tracking the whole band, my vocals will go through this. Every vocal uh, take that we do, every vocal track that we record goes through this analog gear. Between the Rupert Neve and the inward connections, it gives it a nice, uh, compressed, warm, silky, creamy sound, which is what you're going for with uh, vocals, at least it's what I'm going for. So that's my uh, outboard, my, my, my preamp and my compressor radial, and the radial workhorse chassis um, as well. It's nice and portable, you can pick it up, you can move it around, you can take it mobile if you're going out uh, live to record bands. Um, and then from here, uh, also down right here in front, I have the uh, PreSonus fader port, which is a nice way to do all your transport controls and your DAW, especially if I'm sitting in front of the, the desk here trying to record guitar parts myself, instead of using the mouse to control the, you know, toggle the record on and off, playback, start and stop. I could do that all from the fader port. So this is really nice as well. Nice little uh, convenience when you're trying to record and play at the same time. For my monitors, I'm using the uh, Focal Solo B6s, which is uh, probably the best set of monitors I've ever listened to. And uh, monitors are a real um, personal preference and uh, everyone has a different opinion about monitors and what sounds good to you. Um, I tell people a lot when they're first starting their studio, they say, what should I buy first? What should I, where should I invest all my money? Should I go out and buy a bunch of analog summing devices or real high quality interfaces or 500 series type stuff? Um, before you do anything, um, you wanna make sure you have a real uh, you know, high-end or powerful computer, which we'll talk about in a second. And then the next place you wanna spend your money is on a good set of monitors. And again, it's a personal preference thing. They Monitors range from $300 all the way up to thousands of dollars for a pair. Uh, but I love the Focals. These are, I think, are about 12 or 1300 bucks a piece, about $2,400 for the pair, but a wonderful set of monitors. Love these monitors. Um, and then what you can't see, probably underneath here by my uh, by my legs here, underneath the desk, is I have a 2009 uh, Mac Pro um, computer. It's a quad-core 2.93 gigahertz processor with 24 gigs of RAM. Um, older computer, yes, but uh, runs like a dream. Everything runs on it really, really well. It's super stable. I could do uh, all my audio recording, video recording, my uh, on Final Cut, I'll be editing this video. Um, all on that computer and it um, does a really great job and it, and it works like a champ and it, I could count on one hand the amount of times it's crashed on me since 2009. So I really love uh, Apple products and I love the Mac as well. So that's kind of the overview of, the, of my uh, workstation here and, and some of the gear that I have. Again, it's not a lot of gear. Uh, it's just basic stuff. I guess maybe the summing devices, the analog summing devices are a little bit more of an upgrade, a little bit more than what you would see in typical home studios. But again, just 16 channels of inputs. Um, and primarily I use that just because when I have a drum kit here, I'll take 10 channels just on the drum kit. If I wasn't tracking live bands, you can certainly get away with just one uh, interface. Eight channels is plenty, but for doing full bands, uh, two interfaces is necessary for me. Um, and just a small amount of uh, analog outboard gear, um, and that's really about it. So this studio is really kind of a digital analog kind of a hybrid. So uh, we're going to take a look at another section of the studio now. So I hope you enjoyed this, um, and we'll move on to the next section of the tour. 
Hi, welcome back. Welcome to our uh, drum room slash guitar room slash pseudo vocal booth isolation room. This room here, which you can't see from this angle, but I'll cut in some uh, video of me panning across this room, is a 14 by 12 room, about seven and a half foot ceilings. And I use this room when I'm tracking a band. I use this as our drum room. And the drummer can see the other musicians out in the other room, in the control room through this window over to my right. Um, and when I'm not tracking a full band, if I'm tracking just, say, a vocalist, I'll use this as a vocal room. Um, if I'm tracking a singer, songwriter, kind of acoustic guitar player, we'll do it all in this room. So I try to use this room to track many different types of instruments, everything from per percussion to drums to acoustic guitars, isolate guitar amplifiers out here from the other room in the control room. And it's just a utility room, which is great. 14 by 12, good size room. So I wanted to show you some of my uh, guitar amps here and some of the guitar related equipment. Um, and we'll start off here with the bottom of the the two bottom cabinets. So um, on two 4x12 cabinets here on the bottom, this one here uh, with the cover on it is loaded with the um, Celestian uh, Vintage 30s. This cabinet over here has Celestian uh, Greenback, 25 watt Greenbacks. Two totally different sounding cabinets, which is great. Clients come in, they bring their guitar head, drop it on one of these cabinets. Um, it works out really well. They don't have to drag their 4x12 cabinet here. This amp on top here is a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe 112 all tube head. Great for blues, country, cleaner type sounding, not really hard rock and metal, um, but everything other than that sounds great through this with a Telecaster or a Strat, uh, sounds amazing. Uh, even a Les Paul, but typically Telecasters and Strats I put through here, it sounds really, really good. Um, over here I have the uh, Eddie Van Halen uh, Fender 5153. 50 watt version of head, three channel head, great for hard rock, uh, metal, um, all the rock stuff, great, especially with this greenback uh, loaded Celestian greenback cabinet, sounds amazing. And then on top here, I have a, a device for recording guitars called the uh, Rivera Rock Crusher Recording. What this unit allows me to do is it allows me to go from my guitar amp to the rock crusher directly to my interface and I don't need to use a cabinet. Um, this is has is really a two kind of two units in one. The uh, left uh, section here is the uh, power attenuator. So it's a power attenuator slash speaker simulator. Let's talk about the speaker simulator first. So you don't need to use a cabinet. You go from your guitar head into here and you have a graphic equalizer and you can shape the sound directly through your interface, directly into your DAW without the use of a cabinet. So it actually puts a load on the tube head so you don't have to worry about loading up a cabinet, which is great, especially if you record in small rooms, houses, apartments, or late at night or early in the morning where you don't want to wake up the neighbors and wake up the rest of your family. You can record at very low bedroom volumes and still get that nice cranked up uh, tube head. You can crank up the gain, crank up the volume, really drive the tubes like you would when you're miking up a cabinet, but then you can attenuate the volume here, which is wonderful. Um, in it, in it, um, simulates different types of classic guitar speakers. The Vintage 30s, the, the Creamback 25s, the Marshall GT 75 watt speakers, and they sound just like the cabinet. So it's a great way to really record direct tube amps directly without having to worry about volume um, being the issue. Um, the other section here is the power attenuator section where um, and what's great about this and what's a little unique is this particular power attenuator or hot plate is, is, is another well-known term for it, is a selectable impedance, 8 ohm or 16 ohms. Normally when you buy one of these units, you have to buy an 8 ohm unit or a 16 ohm unit. This, you can just hit the flip of the switch. You can change it from 8 ohms to 16 ohms, depending on the cabinet that you have. And what this does is this goes between your guitar amp, when you're running it in the uh, power attenuator mode, and your cabinet. And what it allows you to do is it allows you in 15 dB increments, turn down the output volume from the amp to the cabinet. So once again, you can crank up the, uh, the tube head, really drive the tubes to get that nice tube saturation gain sound into a four x 12 or two by 12 or one by 12 cabinet. And you can dial down the output to the cabinet so the volume comes way down. So you can get that real cranked up tube sounds in a much lower volume. And this way you can still mic up your favorite cabinet with a couple of different microphones and you can blend them together if that's what you choose to do. Um, and it's a, 
really well made, heavy duty, military grade type switches and dials. Uh, really nice uh, unit for recording direct guitars um, at bedroom quiet levels. So that is what I use this room for, and here's some of my guitar gear. Oh, and last but not least, I have a, some pedals here that I use. I have a, a, a MXR um, a carbon copy delay, the uh, TC Electronics Hall of Fame reverb pedal, and an MXR Phase 90, which is, you know, I use reverb and delay primarily on all guitar tracks on some level, even if it's very subtle. And then every now and again, um, I'll throw in a little phaser depending on the uh, track that I'm recording. I don't use any overdrive and distortion pedals because I typically, when I'm doing real heavy rock stuff, I get it right out of the 5150. This has got more than enough gain um, to give me all the gain and all the uh, ty types of distorted sounds that I want that I really don't uh, use overdrive and distortion pedals, so to speak. So that's my guitar gear, um, and that is a utility room slash drum room here at my studio. So let's move on to the uh, next room. Welcome to the uh, guitar area, or the guitar section of the uh, of my studio. Um, I'm going to show you some electric guitars, a couple acoustic guitars that I use. I get asked that question a lot, what kind of guitars do you have? Um, I use these primarily for my own music. Um, at times I let clients use my guitars as well. I'm not a, depends on the client, I'm not a big fan of letting other people play my guitars. <laughs> Which I'm sure all your guitar players can relate to. But uh, anyhow, but at times I do, I'm just teasing. Um, so let me show you some of the electric guitars first. and. Um, I have, uh, you know, four or five electric guitars and they were picked specifically for a reason. I tried to make sure that I had enough, um, and same thing with my guitar amps, which you'll see a little later. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was able to cover a, a wide variety of tonal um, uh, aspects of guitar. So in other words, I wanted to have a heavy rock kind of guitar sound, also kind of a clean, more Fender type of a sound, so on and so forth. So keep that in mind, these guitars were picked for a reason so I can cover really any style of music, um, which is important. You know, whether it's jazz or country or rock or blues, I have kind of a wide variety and you know of sounds I can cover as, as well as acoustic. So let's see, the first guitar over here is um, one of my favorites. It's, uh, it's a 1997 Gibson Les Paul Standard um, and the Cherry Sunburst. I don't know if you can see that in the lighting here. Hopefully this comes out good on video. Um, for a 1997, this guitar is in wonderful condition. Um, I'm not the original owner, I'm the second owner of this guitar. Um, I just love Les Pauls. I'm a huge Jimmy Page fan, and I've always wanted a really nice Les Paul, and, and this is a beautiful Les Paul. Uh, all stock, original pickups, the Cherry Sunburst color. The only thing that's been changed is the, uh, the tuning pegs were changed to the Keystone Grover tuning pegs, not, not the original uh, Gibson uh, tuning pegs, which keep it in a tune much nicer. Um, wonderful guitar, really like this guitar. Um, you know, nice, heavy, not the chambered versions in the late 90s and early 2000s or, or, or mid 2000s, I say, where they chambered out the body to make them lighter. This thing weighs about nine pounds um, and it's, it sustains like a dream, even played acoustically. Uh, you might be able to hear that just sounds wonderful. Um, plug this thing through a 412 with a Marshall and it sounds amazing. So this is the uh, Les Paul 97 uh, Les Paul Standard. Put that over here. second guitar I have here, which is fairly new to my collection. This is um, a Paul Reed Smith um, SE uh, Custom, the Korean made model, not the American made one. This is a, a very affordable guitar, a beautiful uh, tobacco or vintage sunburst. You can take a look at that again. Hopefully this is coming out on the camera. I don't know if the focus is going to be right or if it's going to try to focus on my face. I'll try to block my face a little here and kind of give you a look of that. So this is another really nice uh, guitar. Um, one of the nicest guitars you could possibly get uh, for less than a thousand dollars. Made really, really well. The fretwork is done really nice. Um, has two humbuckers in here again, all stock, where you can coil tap. Um, you can coil tap the uh, to get more of that uh, single coil sound. Um, Five-way toggle switch. Just a beautiful guitar. Really nice guitar. Um, bought this for no other reason than I love the way it looked and I always wanted to have a Paul Reed Smith and a, the American models are very expensive but the Korean models I mean for again for the money you can't beat it and and again even acoustic the guitar sounds great um, so when you plug this in it sounds really good and you get a, a wide variety of tones out of this so this is the uh, Paul Reed Smith again the uh, SE custom I think it's the SE 24 custom really nice guitar uh, great tuners everything stays in tune really well but this is the Korean made model 
Okay, the next guitar I have is something I picked up a few years back. This is uh, a the 60 year uh, an uh, anniversary edition of a Fender Telecaster. This thing I bought in 2013, maybe 2012. Uh, bought it new. Um, this is an American made uh, Telecaster, uh, made in the USA. If you look at the back, it says that right here, made in California. Um, again, great for country, great, great for finger picking, um, for that nice, crisp, uh, kind of honky-tonk kind of a sound. This is a beautiful guitar for blues. Um, really like the Telecaster. Again, this is a tobacco uh, sunburst. I mean, hopefully you can see that here. Take a look. Again, if this is not coming out well on the... I'll take some photos of it, maybe throw it into the edited video, but beautiful uh, tobacco. Here's the back. There we go. So this is a really nice guitar as well. Uh, maple neck which gives it that more high-end sound not as dark and as warm sounding as a Les Paul complete tonal opposite uh, than a Les Paul which I really like so this is a again I think it's a 2012 uh, Fender Telecaster American made and then the next guitar I have here um, is a new addition to my collection which I just picked up this year this is um, a Chapman's guitar Rob Chapman if you if you're guitar player and you uh, you check you're on YouTube checking out uh, uh, guitar players and on YouTube uh, this is I bought this from Anderton's music in the UK this is the Chapman the cap 10 um, beautiful white with this um, this, uh, this uh, tortoiseshell pick guard really really beautiful uh, guitar um, this again is a Korean made uh, guitar made in the same factory as the Paul Reed Smith um, and you can tell it's just a beautifully made guitar again this guitar in American dollars I think was um, about 700 bucks give or take a few dollars wonderful guitar for the money um, has um, USA Seymour Duncan pickups two humbuckers and a single coil the jazz single coil the JB and I'm not sure if I can't remember the, the bridge but JB a jazz and, and another Seymour Duncan uh, pickup love this guitar um, mahogany body um, maple uh, satin finish on the neck uh, ebony fingerboard just a beautiful beautiful guitar Grover tuners with the reverse headstock uh, check out Chapman guitars search them out online if you've never if you've never heard of them you're looking for a great guitar with a lot of tonal different tonal possibilities with the humbuckers and the single coil this is a beautiful guitar again this is the cap 10 cap 10 cap 10 white uh, guitar. They make uh, this is the um, they make uh, a whole series of guitars, um, and I'm thinking about picking up another Chapman for the money. Again, you can't beat them. It's a Korean-made guitar, as I said, but you can't beat it for the money. I mean, beautiful fretwork, nice and smooth. Uh, the guitar is just it's just set up nice. The neck is not came in perfectly straight. Just a beautiful instrument for the money. Again, that's the Chapman uh, Cap 10. Okay couple more here so the next guitar I have is just a, a 1990 no this is a 2005 or 2004 I think it's a 2005 just an American made strap with uh, stock pickups the uh, Tex Texas uh, single coils in, in a humbucker in the back five-way toggle um, I believe this might be an ash body I'm not sure of the body type on this forgive me uh, maple neck again just your, your good old you know Fender uh, Stratocaster in the um, what they call the I think this is a sunburst color like a cherry sunburst really nice uh, wood grain flame on this uh, especially on the back if you can see that I'll try to get my face out of the picture maybe it'll focus in on that uh, beautiful beautiful guitar again that typical Fender sound plugging into like a hot rod deluxe amp which I have uh, and this thing sounds amazing um, so that's the Fender Strat and that's for my electric guitars. Now for my electric bass, oh, this thing weighs a ton. This is a 1997 uh, Fender P bass. It's a standard Fender P bass, stock pickups, uh, beautiful guitar, great bass, perfect for recording, um, very easy to play, sounds great, stock pickups, just sounds really good. Nice and fat and round and clean and just an easy guitar to play. Uh, I love the Fender P basses. I think I picked this up used on eBay for about 650 bucks and the guitar is in wonderful condition for a 1997. Not a mark on it. Frets are in really good condition. Threw some new strings on it. Had it set up. Plays like a dream. 
So this is my uh, my P bass uh, that I use to um, to record all my music with, and a lot of bass players that come to my studio, a lot of clients, um, end up using this bass. They just love the way it plays. I guess I just got lucky and I got a good one. Um, and I've always wanted a Fender P bass because I know they play nice and they're just they sound great and they just plug it into a direct box directly into uh, your DAW and it sounds wonderful. So that's the Fender uh, P bass in black, black with the uh, white uh, pick guard. So let me put that over here. Oops. And now for my acoustics, I have two acoustics, um, both Taylors. I'm a Taylor guy. Love Taylor Acoustics. This is a um, 2000 and I think 11, which I bought new, um, six, six string, um, the 615, um, 600 series, 615 jumbo. I mean, just wonderful sounding, big full body. Um, I bought this guitar brand new and this tobacco uh, sunburst, which I really love. Um, hopefully you can see this well, kind of sparkling off the lights here. Really nice guitar. Use this all the time to record. Um, acoustic guitars, especially acoustic guitars when you're trying to record, um, it's all about the wood. You put a nice microphone on this guitar and it sounds wonderful. It's a wonderful studio guitar. Um, and I just love this thing. Um, and, I, and I make sure I take good care of it. I let clients play it from time to time, but only certain clients get a chance to play these acoustic guitars. Because these things, Taylors are very unknown. Uh, they're very expensive, very high quality, very expensive on the line of a Martin. Um, very high-end guitar. Love it. The 600 series, um, the 615, the Jumbo series, uh, Taylor. And then lastly, um, for an acoustic, I have another Taylor. I'm going to reach out over here. This is my 12 string. This is my um, Taylor. Again, I don't know the year of this. This is a, let me look inside here. This is a 2005 um, 315, right? 315, I think it's the model number. No, excuse me, 355 CE 12 string. So this is the 300 series. Uh, unlike the uh, 600 series, which is a, a you know a higher end, um, this is the 300 series. But I got to tell you, this is an, a wonderful. I don't know if it's not perfectly in tune. Just took it out of the case to show you guys. A wonderful, wonderful guitar. Uh, I used this out live a lot when I was playing out in an acoustic duo. Love this guitar. Thing stays in tune beautifully. Um, sounds amazing. The 355 series is the. Uh, is the jumbo series so it just sounds wonderful and you can take a look at that um, just a natural finish standard stock with the uh, electronics the expression system just like on the 615 they had has the electronics plug this into a pa sounds amazing put a microphone in front of it get that nice big 12 string sound and not the high gloss just the satin kind of a finish on the back and that is the collections of guitars that I use here. So again, people ask me all the time, what kind of guitars do you have? What kind of guitars do you record with? What do you have available for your clients? So that's what I have. I have four, five, or one, two, three, uh, three, five, five electrics, two acoustics, and a bass. Um, again, to be able to cover any style of music. I have everything from the Les Paul, which is the real heavy kind of hard rock, bluesy, or classic rock sound, uh, to the Fender Tele. Uh, which is more the country kind of honky tonk maybe sound uh, bluesy as well to the Fender Strat um, And then the Chapman guitar is really great Chapman guitar is great for jazz great for rock It's a real versatile guitar um, and again for the money you can't beat it um, And then again the two acoustics I have a, a 12 string and a 6 string Taylor's love them um, And I can cover any of the uh, tonal uh, possibilities that I need uh, when I'm either composing music for television or film or for when a client comes in and needs to record something um, a lot of times they'll pick up one of my guitars um, as you know it may be in conjunction with their own guitars and record do different tracks and get two different types of sounds so so that's a guitar uh, setup hope you guys like it um, and in a few minutes we'll uh, take a look over at the uh, the couple of the amps that I use and then we'll move on to the next part of the tour well, I hope you enjoyed my studio tour. I hope it was everything that you expected it to be and much, much more. Um, as you can see, I have not a lot of gear, just you know, a modest amount of gear in my home studio where I make a full-time living. And I'm hoping that an inside look at what my studio looks like will maybe help inspire some of you setting up your own home studio. Um, I only have a couple of different rooms here, but I managed to get everything done from tracking live bands to solo artists to creating my own personal music. 
So if you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, feel free to email me at visionrecordingstudios at yahoo.com. And for more information about my services on uh, mixing and mastering training, as well as any of my other services that I offer, you can go to visionrecordingstudios.com. Um, and there's a ton of uh, content and information there for you as well. So until next time, thanks again for joining me, and I hope to speak to you all soon. And go ahead and make great music in your home studio. Take care.